Peter echoes Christ's own call to repentance when he says in Acts chapter 3, Repent then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshment may come from the Lord. In obedience to these commands, we take the time to confess our sins and to renew our obedience to God. And this morning we'll do this first by a time of silent prayer, and then we'll continue with a prayer of confession that we will recite together. Let us pray. Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired. Bring new love where we have turned hard-hearted. Bring forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded. Bring the joy and freedom from your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of sin. Turn our hearts from selfish desires and sinful habits Help us to live in the new life found in Christ's resurrection. It's in the name of our risen Savior, Christ Jesus our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Receive now the good news that that assure us that we are free from our sin. Hear these words from 1 Corinthians 15. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. To each and to all, to his community and to his friends, where regret is real, Jesus pronounces his pardon, and he grants us the right to begin again. Thanks be to God. We'll respond to these words of forgiveness by reciting the words of faith that we know so well through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now have the opportunity to give back to God as he has so richly blessed us. And this morning's offering goes toward the general fund.
As a word of warning, there's a rather large centipede scurrying somewhere underneath the pews. So if you see it, kill it. <laughs> I bet you never heard an announcement like that one off the pulpit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you have given us your word. Send now your spirit into this place. Open our hearts and our minds to understand what you are speaking to us. Help us to write it upon our hearts and to live it out faithfully each and every day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. The sermon is coming before the scripture. We're switching it up. And it's for a good reason. Because sometimes it's better to understand what the scripture is about. What it's trying to say before you hear it. So that you really understand the words you are hearing. And this morning, that's particular, particularly true. This morning, we're going to read Psalm 119, which is famous for being the longest psalm in the Bible. Many people know it as the longest chapter in the Bible, which basically means Psalm 119 is famous for all the wrong reasons. So this morning, before we read it, we're going to learn what it is about. So that when we read Psalm 119, eventually, we understand the beauty of those words. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 starts really around Mount Sinai. In the Bible, in the Old Testament, God frees the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. He marches them through the Red Sea into the desert, and he gathers them around Mount Sinai. And there around Mount Sinai, the people of Israel become officially the people of God. And it's there that God speaks to Moses and teaches him and the people how they should live. It's around Mount Sinai that God gives them the Ten Commandments and other rules and instructions governing how they're supposed to live, how they're supposed to worship God. We have all those rules and instructions today in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. In those books, we find all the rules for how Israel was supposed to live as the people of God. In total, about 613 laws, ranging from what to eat, what not to eat, to how to wash your hands, when to wash your hands, how to sacrifice, and what to sacrifice. In other words, God gives them everything they will need for knowing what to do and what not to do as the people of God. And many of us are familiar with the fact that the Bible is full of instructions for how God wants us to live. We know that God gives rules and laws in the Old Testament. We know that a lot of those rules and laws in the Old Testament, like the Ten Commandments, still apply to us today. And we know that in the New Testament, there's even more rules and instructions in the letters of Paul and John and Jesus in the Gospels. We know that God gives instructions for how he wants us to live as his people. God gives us all these laws, and he calls us to obey them. To do things like uh, rest on Sundays, gather and worship, to be generous, not greedy, to give up on anger and hatred and learn forgiveness. He calls us to do all these things and so much more. But there is a problem. And it's not a problem from God's end, it's our problem. We don't like being told what to do. I don't know many people who really get excited about rules and laws. We don't like it when the city lowers the speed limit or puts up a new stop sign and you have to stop where you once you could just zoom right through. We find it annoying most of the time. And we've probably felt at one time or another that the laws from God restrict freedom. We grumble about following them, right? They ruin our fun. And even I find myself 
finding that it's easier to follow laws that are easy, that, it, that I just do. And it's also very easy to turn a blind eye to instructions that go against something I want to do. And I know we all have probably felt this way at one time or another. And I'm not trying to accuse. I'm not. But honestly, how many of us read instructions for holy living? That's what they used to be called. And we jump for joy because we're eager to follow them. How many of us read the Ten Commandments or Colossians 3 and think, wow, that's what I want my life to be like. And I'm willing to give up things I like and enjoy if God says don't do it. If we're honest, we know we should follow all of God's instructions, but we sometimes let a few things pass because we want to live how we want to live. The point is, is uh, God's laws are not a subject we often delight in. That's how we feel. The writer of the Psalm 119 feels differently. The psalmist, the writer of the psalm, he feels that God's laws, instead of being a burden, are a great and wonderful gift. Instead of finding ways around the laws or finding them grating or being restrictive, the writer is celebrating, the psalmist is celebrating that God gives guidance to his people. The writer, the psalmist, believes correctly that God gives laws and instructions for how to live so that we don't flounder in sin. Instead, if we follow these laws, we will flourish as individuals and as families. The psalmist believes that God's laws are a roadmap for us, a roadmap around the pitfalls of sin. And if we follow this roadmap, if we follow these laws, we won't live in darkness and anxiety and despair and, and the crushing weight that sin brings. Instead, by following God's laws, we find a life full of life and joy and goodness. Sin brings bad things, but following God's laws brings joy, life, and goodness. That's what the psalmist believes, which is very true. And the psalmist is in the psalm praising God for giving us this road map. And he's telling us that these laws are proof that God loves his people and wants what's best for us. The psalmist is praising God for giving his laws, something we probably don't do very often, but probably should. But what's really special about Psalm 119 is this. Throughout it all, as the writer is praising God for giving all these laws to help us live not in sin, the writer is also expressing his eagerness his eagerness to follow all those same laws. The psalmist isn't grumbling about the laws. He isn't finding them a burden. He's eager to follow each and every one of them. Pastor Ashley and I are going to start reading Psalm 119 in a moment. And I want you to listen to the writer and what he says. I want you to hear that eagerness to follow all of God's laws. Not only is he praising God for giving them to us, this great gift, but he's saying, I want to follow them. They are wonderful and life-giving. And it's that eagerness that I hope God cultivates in each one of us this morning. That's why we're reading it. Psalm 119 is one of my favorite psalms because it reminds me that even though the cross and Jesus Christ are the only way to salvation, God extends his grace in diff to us in different ways too. And his laws and his instructions are just that. To follow those laws, the less our life is full of sin and its consequences, and the more it's full of God's grace. And the psalmist's ultimate message is be eager be willing to follow God's laws. So Pastor Ashley and I are going to read 
about half of Psalm 119. We're going to read half of it this morning. Um, only half, because if we were to read the full thing, it takes about 25 to 30 minutes to read all of it through. So we're going to read half. But listen to the words of Psalm 119, and I hope they awaken in you an eagerness to follow God's laws. And may the words challenge you to love them in new and special ways. I have one more thing to say before we begin reading. I found the bug. Where was it? It's... <laughs> one final thing before we begin. Um, we know words like commandments and laws and stuff like that, but there's a few other words in the psalm. Uh, you might come across, we'll say things like precepts and statutes and anything else decrees. that's... Decrees. Decrees. All those words, commandments, statutes, precepts, decrees, laws, they all mean the same thing. So please don't be distracted by the different words. They all mean the same things, which is something spoken by God to us. It means his laws to us. Psalm 119. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his statutes and seek him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees. Then I would not be put to shame when I consider all of your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous laws. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me. How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following all your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding, so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart toward your statutes, and not toward selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, preserve my life. Remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope. My comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. The arrogant mock me unmercifully, but I do not turn from your law. I remember, Lord, your ancient laws, and I find comfort in them. Indignation grips me because of the wicked who have forsaken your law. Your decrees are the theme of my song wherever I lodge. In the night, Lord, I remember your name, that I may keep your law. This has been my practice. I obey your precepts. You are my portion, Lord. I have promised to obey your words. I have sought your face with all my heart, 
Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and have turned my steps to your statutes. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Though the wicked bind me with ropes, I will not forget your law. At midnight, I rise to give you thanks for your righteous laws. I am a friend to all who fear you, to all who follow your precepts. The earth is filled with your love, Lord. Teach me your decrees. Do good to your servant according to your word. Teach me knowledge and good judgment, for I trust your commands. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. You are good, and what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Your word is a light for my feet, is a lamp for my feet and a light my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. I hate double-minded people, but I love your law. You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. Away from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commands of my God. Sustain me, my God, according to your promise, and I will live. Do not let my hopes be dashed. Uphold me, and I will be delivered. I will always have regard for your decrees. You reject all who stray from your decrees, for their delusions come to nothing. All the wicked of the earth you discard like dross. Therefore, I love your statutes. My flesh trembles in fear of you. I stand in awe of your laws. Your statutes are wonderful. Therefore, I obey them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, longing for your commands. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as you always do to those who love your name. Direct my footsteps according to your word, and let no sin rule over me. Redeem me from human oppression that I may obey your precepts. Make your face shine on your servant, and teach me your decrees. Streams of tears flow from my eyes, for your law is not obeyed. 
Look on my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion, Lord, is great. Preserve my life according to your laws. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. I look on the faithless with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, Lord, in accordance with your love. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. People of God, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thank to God. God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the psalmist's point is so very clear. You give your laws to us to direct us, and we should be eager and willing to hear them, learn them, and live them. Lord, awaken in us an eagerness to follow you, not just to praise you for the salvation found in Jesus Christ, but to dedicate our lives as your people to following your will. For it is only with you that we find love, mercy, grace, and life. And may we begin to live that life of obedience always. Lord, we ask a blessing upon us as we do this, for we cannot do it alone, but only with your power, your will, and your Holy Spirit who lives in us. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.